Hi, welcome to part four of this video mini series. Hopefully you're, uh, you've watched the other ones. If you haven't, go back and watch the other ones in the playlist. Uh, if you end up liking this video, subscribe. If you've watched enough of them to know that you're, 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 you're starting to like what we're doing, then uh, you might consider subscribing as well, or head over to the website as well, forthelandlords.com. You can subscribe to all of our emails there if you want to do that. Um, if you've just stumbled across this video on YouTube thinking, who is this guy? Uh, I'm, I'm a landlord. Um, I guess I've been around long enough to know um, I, what I judge success on um, in terms of you know, being a landlord, renting out, buy to that property. It's the money, number one. It's the time I'm taking to do it. And also it's the hassle factor as well. So I own a letting agency now for the landlords.com that aims to increase landlords income, reduce the amount of time that they spend on it and decrease their hassle as well. So um, in short, we're on a, on a mission to make landlords happy. These videos are a bit of a tutorial on how we do that. Take them how you want them, use them yourself. Come and join us as a landlord if you want a letting agency as well. Uh, the more the merrier. So let's get on to it. Um, uh, with, 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 a, with a title like Happy Landlords, this series could seem a bit, um, you know, woolly. Make no mistake, this is this is an, a, a list of actionable stuff. So let's, let's dig into it. Um, I've got, got a list of things I want to run through you, with you here. You will hopefully have watched the first three videos. So we're going to be on the first three videos where we're talking about what we call the three lines of defence. And we call them the lines of defence because they're the things you need to put in place before a tenant moves into your property. So defence is a good analogy, isn't it? Um, once the tenants have got the keys, then we replace those what we call three lines of defence with three further what we call management focuses. And that's what I want to run through today. The... Uh, the first of those management focuses. Um, once the tenant moves in, the job changes ever so slightly, doesn't it? It's a little bit less intense, you know, it's gonna be spread out over three, four, five years probably. Um, but nonetheless, it, you've got to keep on top of everything and it's easy to let things slip. There is so much at stake that you can't afford to do that. Um, most landlords, if you to ask them, and I have, we've, we've tried it, we've had rooms full of um, you know, 20 or 30 uh, landlords and if you ask them what's important and to rank it in order, um, well, they invariably just say two things and order, order either or one or two. They want their money, they want to get paid and they want their house looking after. Seems obvious, but really, when it boils down to it, that's what tenants want, uh, landlords want. Um, now, First management focus, that's, that by the way is giving you a hint as to what our management focus number two and two and three is. But our first management focus, um, I honestly believe when you listen to this rest of this video, hopefully you'll agree with me. Um, I think that by putting this first, you've got a better chance of number two and three the property being looked after and the rent coming through. Um, it gives you a much better chance. The first management focus is what we call the renter relationship. Now, before you turn off and think I'm going to start talking about um, something a bit touchy feely and you know, um, you know, tenant happiness for the next eight minutes, um, let me explain that not only does this matter, it's definitely the best and most profitable way forward. So, um, you know, it has got a nice byproduct. Your tenant's been happy. If you care about those things, I genuinely do. Um, but if, if, if you're one of those miserable guests and you don't really get, get to the bottom of it, this is the best way, best way forward, the best um, pound shillings and pence, profit and loss based, you know, hard nosed way forward. So we're talking about something else. I'm talking about the renter relationship. Um, make no mistake, this is the most profitable way things. A good landlord needs a good renter. A good renter needs a good landlord. So um, it does matter. So when we talk about the, um, the rent relationship, yes, we are talking about checking the pulse of the tenancy, if you like, um, and it's a, it's a really useful barometer. There's, there's more to it than that, but you know, just, just the, you know, I, I call the tenants up, the, the, the boiler's broken down on a Friday afternoon, and they often take half a day off to let the engineer in and, um, uh, and sort things out. Um, that would be a, 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 an instance of that. Now, you might be checking up on those things with a, you know, Power BI dashboard of you know, sentiment and checks and uh, you know, surveys and those kind of things, or you might just be listening to a tenant on the other end, depending you know, whether you're, you're a landlord with one or two houses or a letting agency with a thousand. You might have different systems, but just taking that tenant pulse um, is a yeah you know, a great indicator. I'm a great believer in if something's hard, then 
it's probably wrong. If something's easy, um, it's probably right. Now, I'm not scared of hard work, but it's much better to be working hard at something that's easy if you haven't got all that resistance around it. So do pay attention to the amount of hassle that your tenancy is causing you because it could be the tenant, but it could also be you and feed that back into your system. Easy equals less time intensive, less hassle. So don't forget that. It's, an, it's a nice barometer. So the next part of keeping a good renter relationship is managing those things that are keeping you up at night. And um, if yeah, easy is time, then these things are definitely the hassle, the, um, the uns, the unprepared, unexpected, those things. So um, no, number one, um, is the perfect paperwork, you'll have to go back to video number three for that, is that still okay? You know, it's, it's constant tending. Uh, the correct notices, you know, things need re-signing, reissuing, uh, keep, just to keep you legal and compliant. That's what I mean by the things that could potentially keep you up at night. Uh, they also protect you if the worst could happen, you know, if, if, the, if the worst should happen. Um, yeah. if, if there is something that needs you to prove you've got certain documents, there you are. So th th this perfect paperwork that we talked about in the, uh, the, the three lines of defense, it can go out of date. So the management focus, renter relationship, is about keeping that paperwork um, uh, perfect as well. Um, we just as a little bit anecdotal kind of, um, we, we, we see uh, letters from councils. I've seen several in different councils across the UK um, handed to tenants. Um, it's quite easy for a council to find a tenant um, generally speak, and, and also find the landlord of that, generally speaking, if you check the council records, if somebody owns a house versus paying the, uh, one, one person's paying the council tax and another, and another person owns it, it's a rented property. A quick AI scan by some computer somewhere can check land registry and council tax records and m work out which ones are rented. So the councils definitely know where to knock. That's definitely uh, easy for them to do. They hand out this leaflet, and it's you know a citizen's advice leaflet. And uh, you know, if your landlord hasn't got this license, they haven't done this, they haven't done that. This is what you should do to claim all your rent back since the day they should have had a license, or how you contact the environmental health officer. It's done in a in a you know, well-meaning way from the council's point of view, I guess, and it doesn't cause us any any problems. But I've seen it cause lots of landlords some problems. Getting that pa perfect paperwork and keeping it perfect means you can sleep well at night because when they knock on the door to one of my tenants, I know the tenant's going to go, everything's fine here, thank you very much. Um, so that's a, a garden against the hassle. Let's now talk about the stuff that can actually make you some money, shall we? Um, yeah, number one, keeping on top of rent increases. Um, I think it's really important that you maximise the rent. Now, um, there's a lot of landlords that say, you know, I don't want to keep putting, I'd rather have a long-term stable tenant. I'd rather have both. And I think it's actually um, much fairer to be doing little and often rather than letting it get behind and then resenting the tenant for, you know, I've seen it where the landlords have let it go and it's a hundred pounds a month different. And, you know, then all of a sudden the landlord thinks, well, I do want to catch that up now. Little and often's better. Uh, I also think that you're doing the tenant and the tenancy a disservice. Not only, you know, I want both. I want it, I want it to be tight. I want everything to be like nice and organized and I want to know that the tenants are not I'm not greedy, I just want market rent. And if you don't get that, I think actually you're putting quite a lot of other things in jeopardy, not just, in jeopardy, not just you know, food on your own table as a landlord, as you're running a business, but make no mistake, the plumber, when the tap leaks, they've put their rates up to market rate. So if you haven't put your market rates up, you might find yourself in a position where you can't look after the property in the way that you want to, and that's doing the tenant a disservice. So, um, I do, I do get it. I, get, I see the kind of landlord that also says, you know what, um, uh, I, I, I've got a long-term tenant, they cause me no hassle. Uh, I know that the house is a bit of a wreck and it's not, not quite how it wants to be. So we'll just leave everything alone, leave it as it is, and uh, that tenant can live in it. It's not perfect, but they're not paying me much money and hopefully they stay for a long time and I'll just forget about it. For me, that's where I see all the disasters coming in. Um, you know, the tenant deserves to live in a decent and safe home, and actually, they're legally you're legally obliged as a landlord to provide one. So, again, that's actually going back to the last point. And that's building up your, your nagging things to keep keep you awake at night. Um, just accepting a lower rent because the place is a, is crap, then that's no good. Yeah, let's keep keep the standards high. Um, 
Finally, there is the kind of um, relationship management which is which is going to going to save you money, not just make you money, but save you money. So, um, save is the same as make. Don't forget. So, uh, you know, e equally important. Uh, that's things like getting the right insurances, be it um, you know, tenants contents insurance, landlord contents insurance. Um, I've lost count of the amount of, amount of um, tenants that have called, and uh, yeah, something's gone wrong. A leak, leak, and it fell on my iPad, and now you owe me a new iPad. And no, actually, we don't. It should have been insured. And part of the tenancy agreement is it should have been insured, but it causes you know, it's hard, and then you know that things are going wrong. Whereas if you offered them tenancy insurance up front, then it helps. It's not it's not not your obligation actually, but uh, to do those things, but it just knocks all the edges off the process and make things smooth. You know, you know, contents insurance. Um, you know, do, does your contents insurance uh, include um, malicious damage cover? Uh, do you want rent or do you want? Can you have? Should you get uh, rent and legal cover for your tenancy as a landlord? That's something that lots of landlords are taking up now. Um, nil nil deposit schemes are always an option. They make a, a a property more affordable for a tenant to move into, particularly with a, an HMO room, something like that. It makes it a bit easier to move into. It brings the the cost of moving in lower because instead of finding a deposit, they're paying a bond. There's loads of different schemes. You've got to pick a good one. I can tell you. So some of them, the good ones, work really well. Some of the other ones don't. Um, you've got to have a, a good working knowledge of all of those things and know when to offer them to the tenant, when to re-offer them, when to renew them, talk about them again or re review them, um, all the way throughout the tenancy um, to keep that renter relationship right. Keep it running smoothly and easily. Reduce your time input reduce the hassle, the unexpected. Uh, and of course, if it all does go wrong, um, you need to know what to do. And the rental relationship, you know, there's a switch that can flick in our office. If things go wrong, we need to know what notices to serve. Um, possession notice, notice of intention, um, you know, whatever it is. Having all those notices preloaded is key. So running the rental relationship is nice when it's nice and it's good when it's good. But if it sours, you haven't got long to react. Um, you, if you need to pull the, pull the trigger on them, it's hours or days. And if you notice something's wrong, you need to deal with it straight away. You, know, you and I, the, the tenant have had a conversation. You can see that there's something wrong. Within the next five minutes, there needs to be you know, something in their email box and a letter winging its way through the post. Otherwise, what you're really saying is, I don't really know what I'm doing or I don't care. Maybe you do care, but if you haven't told them you care, it's the same thing, isn't it? So um, yeah, just, just say, you know, the tenant isn't looking after the property, not paying the rent, whatever. If you don't do something about that straight away, you know, leave it a week, two weeks, three weeks. Just think what you're saying to the tenant there. So the tenant's already got the wrong impression. Um, to be able to pull the trigger like that, you know, the, the, the the sort of the you know the, the um, it, it happens very rarely, um, but when you need to, you need to have all those things preloaded. So um, yeah, the best way would be to use a letting agency. We've got a bank of those things, and we know exactly you know, if this happens, that happens. If this happens, we send that letter. Seven days later, we send that letter. Well, whatever the process is. Now, if you are not using a letting agency, I'd highly recommend you uh, give us a call. You know? um, but, but whatever, be prepared. Maybe you might want to sign up to a, a, like an, an online uh, bureau, legal bureau, or the, one or something like that. Um, yeah, just just get yourself organised. So um, yeah, hopefully that's been useful. The rental relationship, keeping it running. Just remember, if it's hard, then it's probably wrong. If it's running easy, it's probably right. I like that uh, that um, very simple way of um, summing it up. So the next two parts of the mini series, I've already given you a bit of a hint. We're going to cover off what I think the priority for most landlords is looking after the property, looking after the money. So stay, stay tuned for those. Subscribe and they'll be delivered straight to your inbox. Um, don't overlook this renter relationship. For me, if a landlord thinks property, money, it's the renter relationship that straddles the top of those two things and keeps them together and keep it easy. So um, if you've got a property portfolio and you think it could benefit from this kind of tight management, go to the description of the video and uh, you'll find a link in there to discovery at, uh, sorry, an, an email address, discovery at for the landlords. Click on that, send us an email. Um, go to discovery at for the it's, a, you know, it, it's an e, it's an email address you can send or it's a web page you can go to um, book on a discovery call and we run the calls once every uh, uh, couple of weeks or so there's 
uh, up to 10 people. So it's a large enough group to get all the questions answered, uh, but also you can hide in the background if you're a little bit shy. And it's your chance to get all the questions answered. You know, this is how we do things. You know, you can come and um, yeah, take all, all of the benefit out of our head and uh, go use it yourself, or you might want to get yourself a, a good letting agency, and that's the first step of, of engaging us as a letting agency as well. So that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe, like us if you thought the video was good, and uh, we'll see you for the next video. Bye for now.